438. Among other things, an ideal fuel for the control thrusters of a space vehicle should decompose in a spontaneous exothermic reaction when exposed to the appropriate catalyst. Evaluate the following substances under standard state conditions as suitable candidates for fuels. Okay, so in this case, we have hydrogen peroxide, right? What we put on our cuts and, uh, yeah, that, not, not burns, cuts, right? When we accidentally scrape our knee or something to clean it out. So, will hydrogen peroxide, H2O2 liquid, be a suitable fuel for, you know, these space vehicles? It's got to decompose, it's got to break down into its two substances, H2O gas plus a half O2 gas, but it has to do that in a spontaneous exothermic way, right, or reaction. So there's two different things going on here. We need to make sure that this is spontaneous, that there's no other additional external energy that is needed to make this decomposition happen. And we need to know that it's giving off heat, right? That's exothermic, releasing heat. But two different variables. If we're talking about spontaneity, right, and being spontaneous, that is always going to your delta G variable. That's Gibbs free energy. Now, which one is being spontaneous? Is it delta G being a negative or a positive? It's a negative one. Anytime that delta G is a negative value, that means that the reaction is spontaneous. There's no need for any additional external energy to make it run. So for the first part, we're gonna just be looking at delta Gs because I wanna make sure that the delta G for the whole entire reaction is that negative value. Now, they told me that it was standard state conditions, which means that I could go in the back of a textbook, and that's exactly what I did, to get each individual delta G value. Now, how am I going to find the, the, the delta G for the whole reaction? Well, it's the formula, which is here. Delta G for your whole entire reaction, Rxn, is the sum, that's this little symbol here, that just means the sum, aka addition, right? It's the sum of all your delta Gs of your products minus the sum of all your delta Gs of your reactants, right? So in essence, it's products minus reactants. But we have to sum them up first before we plug it into the formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this H value. You'll probably guess where we're going with these. But for now, we're going to pretend that they don't even exist because we're only working on the delta Gs. Okay. So now, are these values going to be different or are they going to be the same? Well, that goes by the balanced equation. We have to specifically look at the coefficients. For H2O2, there was no coefficient in the front. That means that there was only one. There was only one H2O. And in this case, there was a half O2. It's just good practice to take all the values that you found. This is for one mole. But, you know, chances are, if you have two or three or four moles, you're going to have to multiply these numbers. So always take your coefficient and just times it by your number. So this would be times by one and one, and this one would be times by a half. But obviously a half times one, a half times zero is just zero, right? Anything times zero is zero. Now we just have to sum them up, right? In this case, you have two products. It's literally H2O plus the O2 gas. So it'd be this value plus this value. But one times a negative 228.59 plus zero would be the negative 228.59. So that's the number for the right side. And one times a negative 120.35 is a negative 120.35. So now we have our summed up values that we're going to use in our equation. So delta G for the whole entire reaction would be products negative 241.82 minus reactants, which is negative 187.78. I'm just going to write the answer on this side because we just need a little bit more space. So calc time. Negative 241, oh boy, 241.82 minus a negative 187.78. And let's see what we get. There we go. 
So we get a delta G for the whole entire reaction of being a negative 54.04 kilojoules. Now, we have to analyze this value, right? Because we don't really care about the actual quantity. We just care about whether it's spontaneous. And we did say that it being spontaneous, the delta G has to be a negative value. And there it is. So this would be spontaneous. So this decomposition passes the first test. It is a spontaneous reaction. Now we have to find out, is it exothermic? Well, exothermic, talking about heat, right? Thermal, therm, that's always heat. And I can memorize that because there's an H in exothermic. So this would be delta H and it goes with the heat, right? So that's why I'm pulling in all these delta H values. But now the question is, if I wanna be exothermic, is this a positive or is this a negative value? Well, the wording is kind of in the name, right? Exo. If you're ex, you're exiting the building, right? If you have an ex boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever, they're not with you anymore. They left, right? So exit, ex, you're leaving. That's a negative value, right? Negative, leaving, tomato, tomato, yeah. So we're looking for a delta H that's a negative value. So I went to the back of the textbook, I found the delta H's, and we have to do the same thing for the delta H. We gotta find the delta H for the whole entire reaction. So it's good because we can use this formula again, but instead of G's, you got it. I could just substitute in H's, and now I have a brand new formula. So the delta H for the whole entire reaction is my sum of the H's for the products minus the sum of the H's for the reactants. So we're gonna do the same process all over again. We're gonna take the values that we found and multiply them by the coefficients. It's just good practice. So this would be one times by one. This would be times by one, and this would still be times by a half. Sum up the products, because you have two of them. But, you know, same thing as before, this would still be negative 241.82, because you're adding it to zero. And this is just negative 187.78. We have our numbers. Let's throw it in. Delta H for the whole entire reaction equals the sum of the products, negative 241.82. And I just made, I just noticed that I made a mistake. Did anybody catch that? Was anybody yelling? at me. I accidentally took the negative 241 and put it in for my delta G. Silly mistakes. Even I make mistakes. But we just notice them as we go along and we just correct them. What was I doing here? I was doing the delta H values. Oh my goodness, Christina, what is going on? Let's just redo this, right? Negative 228.59. This would be the negative 120. You probably were screaming at me the whole time, but it finally got to over here. Takes a little bit of time. Wi-Fi is not so good, but now I finally hear you. Let's just redo this number because we accidentally, well, I accidentally, this is the delta H value. Let's just write this out and then we'll correct it. So this would still be a negative, actually, negative 187.78. Yep. Okay, so this one is the negative 54. Let's just see if we still get a negative value. Box this off. And since it's a negative, keep in mind of exactly what we said. Delta H is a negative, this is exothermic. So that's good. Let's just go back and just redo this. Negative 228.59 minus a negative 120.35. Ah, still a negative value, so we are good. Negative 108.24. Still a negative value, negatives for both, that's exactly what we wanted. So, it is spontaneous, it is exothermic, 
So is it a good candidate for being a fuel? Yes, it is. It is a good candidate. Candidate for fuels. And that is actually the answer. There we go. All right. I really hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, tell your classmates. Love to help them out as well. I hope you're all doing well. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.